for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from the fabulous forum here in Englewood, California, serving the Southland, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the middleweight championship of the world. And it's all brought to you by K2 Promotions and Triple G Promotions in association with TGB Promotions. Sponsored by Expo 2017, BI Group, Tesla Bank, and Tecate Con Caracter. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman John Frierson, Executive Officer Andy Foster, WBA President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, IBF President Daryl Peoples, IBO President Ed Levine, and representing the WBC for its interim title, President Mauricio Suleiman. At ringside, the three judges scoring, Adelaide Berg, Steve Morrow, and Pat Russell. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, World Championship veteran referee, Jack Reese. And now, the officials are ready, the fighters, are in the ring and they are ready. LA, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Jay Stenzel, wearing green with black and silver. Official weight, 159 one half pounds. A perfect professional record, consisting of 18 fights, 18 victories, including 12 wins by knockout, and seven of his last 11 victories by KO. Fighting out of Washington, D.C., here is the undefeated challenger, Dominic And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Abel Sanchez, wearing blue with white, officially weighing in at 159 pounds. As a professional, 34 fights, 34 victories, including 31 knockouts. 21 consecutive knockouts, 16 straight KOs and world title fights from Karaganda, Kazakhstan, the reigning, defending, universally recognized, 160-pound, undisputed, undefeated, middleweight champion of the world, Dami Gaspada, Gennady, Gennadyovich, Golovkin, Triple, Just want to remind you, listen and obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, fight clean. Good luck. Football has made its way into some of our conversations uh, so far tonight, but this reminds me of the first round of the NBA playoffs. Um, you don't think that the top teams are in jeopardy, but you can't help it that Steph Curry isn't facing Kawhi Leonard yet. This is what you got. And so it becomes watching the performance of the best in the business. And Wade's plan for scoring the upset is that he boxes Golovkin. He says he doesn't have any idea how good a boxer I am and that he eventually lands a big right hand and upsets the Triple G apple cart. So we'll see whether that can happen. They're both listed at 5, 10 and a half. But as they get into the ring, Wade looks like the taller fighter. Yeah, he does, but he looks a little soft around the waist, Jim, so I'm sure uh, Triple G is going to immediately attack the body as soon as he sees fit. Uh, you got to give Wade credit for coming in and taking a fight like this, though, because he hasn't had a big fight in his career yet, so fighting Triple G is not a big fight. It's the biggest fight he could have in this weight class. 
And he's doing a good job of attacking right away here off of Triple G's punches. Ten months ago, Wade struggled to get by 41-year-old Australian veteran Sam Solomon. You just saw Golovkin land a left hook to the body. It's one of his more effective shots. Logic says if you struggle with Sam Solomon, who does not have any power, you may be in truly deep against Gennady Golovkin. But, of course, styles make fights, and those are two entirely different stylistic enterprises. Yeah, they are, but you are in deep fighting Triple G anyway. Um, the only problem I see here for a person like Dominique is that he's not really quick enough to surprise Triple G. If you're not quick enough to bring him a surprise, good body shot, though. If you're not quick enough to bring him a real surprise, then it's going to be really tough for you to upset him. Golovkin didn't seem to believe he needed to know much specific about Wade. Acknowledged that he only looked at a few minutes of tape. Relies on Abel Sanchez to provide whatever scouting report he thinks is necessary going into the fight. Golovkin says that the jab fest against David Lemieux in his last fight, when he threw nearly 50 jabs in round one and instantly made it a tactical fight rather than the war a lot of people expected, he says that was a decision that was made on the fly. It was not something they planned in advance. He just walked in in round one, started landing jabs, and thought, I'll stick with this. Yeah, good fighters come in and see what works in their first round, Jim. And whatever works is what they take. I mean, if you're smart, you take what the opponent gives you. Dominic Wade's a, a nice young fighter in his prime, undefeated. He can handle himself. But so far, he hasn't shown Triple G anything to worry about. No, he doesn't have enough power to really cause him uh, any concern. And that's not good for him. Two and a half minutes in. Golovkin dominating contact, landing, as you can see, three times as many punches as Wade by CompuBox count in the round. Hasn't landed anything really dramatically big. Now he does. That was big enough. Yep, yes, it was. Big enough to end the fight, as a matter of fact. Not enough time in this round. Walk to me. Give me a little bit. So one knockdown on a right hand over the top, but Wade makes it out of round one. Hey, listen, you got to, you got to don't stay in front of him. Jab him and keep turning. Jab and keep turning. Don't stay in front of him. All right? Beautiful work, though. And Don, slam the right hand down the middle. No reaching. You good? You learn another sip? Pretty loud in here. So when you talk to me, talk pretty loud, okay? All right, man. Stay on that jab, double jab. And you see Triple G in close, but Dominic is trying to hold him, and this is why he tried to hold him, because he didn't want to catch his overhand right to the back of the head. That shot causes all types of damage. Uh, you're not, you can't really see it coming. Hits your neck in a very unorthodox way, and it causes you to just lose equilibrium, and down he goes. That's the second time in Wade's career that he's been down. Both knockdowns occurred in the first round. We'll see if he can get his bearings. Last time it happened, he got his bearings and came back and won the fight. Shot behind the ear like that is a quasi-rabbit punch, but um, the way Dominic Wade was turning away, he's presenting that as the target. Lovkin seemed to hurt him with another right hand, but he this did. time Wade stayed up. Yeah, he hurt him again with that same right hand, Jim. And now he knows it's just a matter of time before he catches him and finishes it. Oh. Crowd oohs and ahs at the right hand body shot. Good body shot by Triple G. His body shots are sturdy. And he, a lot like Chocotito, Jim, when they realize a guy can't hurt him, he has a relentless attack, and that in itself is a weapon that they use on the opponent to weaken him. Good body shot again. Stop. Nobody punch. Step out. Step out. Wade looked a little stiff-legged as he backed up after that body shot. Lovkin missing with the right hand. That might have finished it if he had landed it. 
And now Gennady seems to go into that thing, Roy, where... This is the Willie Monroe thing. Yeah, right? he kind of lets the guy hit him a little bit. Show him that he can't hurt him. That he, that he disregards anything to do with punching power when it comes to the opponent. Got to be careful doing that sort of thing, though, because a 160-pound fighter who can crack a little bit is dangerous. Yeah, but he, he's already felt the power of this guy, Dominique Wade, and uh, he's not no kind of way intimidated by his punch of power. Or well, one thing we saw against Lemieux, Golovkin has tremendous belief in his chin. Yes, yes he, he knows he's going to get painted every once in a while because he's a pressure fighter. And down goes Wade for the second time. I don't think he'll make it back on the And on the right hand. Six, Doesn't look eager seven, to get it. No. Eight, nine. Do you want to continue? Look at me. Do you want to continue? Yes? No, this fight is Say over. Again. Say it again. Give me gloves. You better protect yourself. Relax. You better protect yourself. I know that he can. Good oh, hook, some bro. of his best shots now, Roy. Yeah, that's a good hook. There you go. It was the it was the Golovkin left oh. hand, and now it's the right hand. Same punch. And let's see if Jack Reese is even going to consider allowing Six, Wade to continue. Seven. After the third eight, knockout of the fight. Nine, ten. And that's it. Less than two rounds, a series of right hands, and that the was it. The first knockdown was a left hand. The right hand actually hit his shoulder, I believe. It was the left that did the damage, but we'll see on replay. The right hand finished it, but I think Wade was already a finished fighter when he got up. It's not just that Golovkin knocks people out. So do number one and number two now reverse? I, well, you could argue, but it's the way he knocks people out. These iconic knockouts, these indelible images of violence. He's amazing. I mean, it's hard to figure out exactly how much credit you give Golovkin for something that was such an obvious mismatch. Yeah, it's hard to give him a whole lot of credit for that. But, Jim, it's like, I, I love seeing fights, but I want to see competitive fights as well. And I know that there's a guy, and I'm not trying to be a promoter, but there's a guy by the name of Morgan Fitch down in the Pittsburgh area that would definitely be a good fight for Gennady Golovkin. Nobody knows Morgan Fitch. Well, they need to find out who he is because he needs com competition on our network so that we can enjoy him even hey, more. Hey, listen, if there's somebody good who's willing to get in with him, let's find out who he is because there's a lot of expectation at this point that the Canelo Alvarez fight, if it's going to happen, won't happen until next May, not this September. And some very credible people in the sport, like Teddy Atlas, say very openly that Canelo is never going to fight Gennady Golovkin. And I agree, but when you got an opportunity to fight, well, let's look at this first. Can you see the first knockdown? A jab on the chair, as Max talked about, a left uppercut, then followed by an overhand right to the shoulder. And the shoulder punch took him down, but like Max said, the damage was done from the left hand first. The jab right there, the left the uppercut, uppercut right here, boom, that hurt him, and then the shoulder shot just pushed him down because the, the, the hook to the head and the jab to the head did the real damage. That was the first knockout down of that round and the second knockdown in the fight. Yeah, the, the third knockdown, which was the second knockdown this round, I think, came from the right hand, which had been the problem all night long. Well, we know that the third knockdown was on a right hand. I believe that the third knockdown was a right to the chin. Yeah, I think to it the was. jaw. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm in agreement that Canelo wouldn't want to fight him because why would he fight a bigger man when he could fight somebody like Pacquiao, who Roach talked about him fighting, who's a smaller man and make way more money for the less less riskier fight. I think Canelo's the kind of competitor who wants to please fans. I think he understands and respects the boxing public. Yeah. Now, here's a look at the final knockdown. A counter shot right over the top of his left. Boom, counter right hand, right on the chin, and that ended matters. You couldn't ask for a better right hand than that. You know, I've read some comments from people on the web who say, well, I don't think Golovkin's all that big a puncher. What yeah. are they smoking? <laughs> I don't know what they're smoking or drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. He's a big puncher. Which hand are they talking about? The right hand is dangerous. The left hand is even more dangerous. Which hand are they talking about? If he breathes on you, it might be dangerous. <laughs> Michael Buffer is standing by at the ropes with the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jack Reese.
Counts to 10, the official time, two minutes, 37 seconds, round number two. The winner by knockout victory, his record now 35 and 0, 32 KOs, 22 consecutive knockouts. He is still the reigning and defending 160-pound, undisputed, undefeated middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Gennadyovich Golovkin, Triple G. Final copy of box numbers, Golovkin lands 32 punches more, throws 58 punches more, lands at a 41% connect percentage. Power shot category, he lands 48% of his power punches, landing 16 more than did Wade. And you know, Wade put up a fight, he tried, he threw punches, he didn't just hide in there. But it was obvious early on that he didn't have any kind of power to keep Golovkin off of him. So Gennady simply walked forward, took whatever it was that Wade threw, and waited to land his own shots. Yes, he did. And that's how strong Gennady is. He's that type of a fighter that uh, immediately once he realizes that you can't really hurt him, he's on you. And there's nothing you can do to get him off. He does 2,100 crunches per day in training. You're not going to hurt him to the body. Nope, not at all. That's an iron wall. Max Kellerman stands by with Triple G. Congratulations, Gennady. That's 22 knockouts in a row. How do you evaluate what you just did? Max, can you please give me a chance? Just first of all, muchas gracias, my fans from California. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you. And Kazakhstan, of course. Rahmet, Rahmet is gay. No. I feel great, Max, you know, thanks my team, thanks my people, you know, this big gift, big present for my fans. Top five middleweights don't seem to give you much competition. Top ten middleweights seem to offer almost no resistance at all. What do you do next if you can't get Canelo Alvarez right away? I'm still, Max, I'm still champion. Just, of course, I need big name or big fight. Today, not easy work, just present my fans. You know, I'm ready, I'm staying here. Just, I'm ready to fight anybody. I noticed you did in the second round today what you seem to do against uh, other fighters in the past. When you were having your way with them, you kind of drop your hands and take some punches in the face. Do you do that intentionally, and why? Yeah, this is not special. This is, you know, I feel after the first round, it's nothing. It's very close fight. Just maybe, it's my play. This is my game. You're playing a game. Is that to give the fans a show? Of course, everybody come and just watch my fight. Is that to make other fighters brave to think they can hit you so they will fight you? You know, Max, today I, I give chance, may, maybe one percent chance for next fighter. Just, this is possible, just I'm stay here. Do you have anything you want to say to Canelo Alvarez, who has a fight with Amir Khan coming up in a couple of weeks? It doesn't matter who wins, just give me my belt. Hey, I need my belt. I'm ready, I'm ready, guys. Thank you, Gennady. We'll see you again real soon. Jim?